AABIP video educational series. Radial endobronchial ultrasound, overview and clinical use. Radial endobronchial ultrasound or rebus probes can be used with peripheral pulmonary nodules or in the central airway. For the purpose of this video, only rebus probes that are used for peripheral pulmonary nodules will be discussed. The radial probe helps identify and localize lesions for biopsy with a 360 degree direct contact ultrasound probe that passes through the working channel of a bronchoscope. There are three different types of rebus probes available in the United States for peripheral pulmonary lesions. Two are made by Olympus and one by Fuji. The first probe, the Olympus UMS2017 S probe, is the most common probe currently used because it is the smallest in size at 1.8 millimeters and fits through the working channel of a bronchoscope as small as two millimeters in diameter. All probes scan 360 degrees circumferentially in a perpendicular direction to probe insertion. They all have the same frequency, are similar in length, and use a direct contact method. This means that a balloon is not used on the end of the probe to make contact with the target lesion. For this video, the Olympus UMS2017 S probe will be used. It is 220 centimeters in total length and is compatible with bronchoscopes that have a two millimeter and greater working channel. This is the distal end of the probe with the ultrasound. It is delicate and should be handled carefully. To prolong the probe's life, only turn on the probe when it is in the airway or lung parenchyma. Both the convex and radial ultrasound systems use the EU-ME2 processor. On the left is the attachment for the convex probe and on the right is the attachment for the radial probe. The radial probe attachment extends to the probe driver unit. To toggle between the convex E-bus and radial E-bus, press the socket button. To connect the probe to the driver unit, identify the contact pin and insert the pin in the orientation as shown here. The probe is hung as shown next to the driver unit. Press the freeze button to activate the ultrasound. Features that can be seen on the ultrasound screen are the depth of view, gain, contrast, ultrasonic frequency, and the center of the probe. Date, time, and patient identifiers can also be entered. Use these buttons on the keyboard to control gain, depth, acoustic output, and to freeze and unfreeze the ultrasound probe. We will now review the following rebus images. Normal lung, blood vessels, atelectasis, eccentric view, and concentric view. Normal lung is characterized by a snowstorm pattern surrounding the center of the probe. Blood vessels are round, anechoic, and may pulsate. There are no definitive ultrasound features that confirm atelectasis, but the following ultrasound findings may suggest that atelectasis is present. Rapid development of a concentric or eccentric image larger than the target lesion. Homogeneous internal echo reflections of vessels and bronchioles without a distinct margin. Hyperechoic internal dots. This is an example of atelectasis. In an eccentric view, the target lesion is tangential to the center of the probe. The lesion is heterogeneous and darker than the surrounding lung. It is demarcated by hyperechoic lung that is adjacent to the lesion. In a concentric view, the target lesion completely surrounds the center of the probe. The lesion's borders are clearly demarcated by the hyperechoic lung. Additional tools that are made by Olympus that may be used but are not required include a guide sheet that is 1.9 millimeters in diameter and 1050 millimeters in length, and a guiding device. This tool helps to guide the sheet to the target lesion in the periphery. It is double jointed and rotatable. It has a curated end that may be used to sample tissue as well. This is the guiding device. The end of the device is shown here with a curated end. The end is flexed as shown. It can be rotated clockwise or counterclockwise. This example does not use the Olympus guide sheet. This is using a 90 degree super dimension edge catheter. The guiding device is advanced to the sheath. It is flexed and turned in the desired direction. 
the guide sheet is then advanced over the guiding device into the desired airway. Navigation to the nodule. In this example, a guide sheath and guiding device are not used. The nodule is located in the posterior segment of the right upper lobe. Mucus is visible in the airway. This shows the white light view, ultrasound view, and fluoroscopy view. The radial probe is advanced into the lung parenchyma. Fluoroscopy is turned on and the radial probe is used to identify the nodule. The nodule is identified and the fluoro image is saved. Biopsy. The target for biopsy is marked with a pen and is based upon the radial image acquisition. In this example, biopsy forceps are being used.